What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Judgment Day Omega. This is the final issue in the aftermath of Judgment Day. Ajax has become a celestial. Imbued with the powers of a god from the progenitor, she begins to write her teachings. Meanwhile, the Eternals, their secret is out. For every eternal death, it costs one human life. And now they must make reparations. They must now pay their dues. They must prove to all human society that they can be better. That they will be better. This is the beginning of the Eternals pilgrimage. And at the end of this video, we're going to discuss not only the entirety of Judgment Day, but the ramifications that this leaves over moving forward not only for the X-Men, but for all of Earth 616. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Make Make sure you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this final Omega issue, we are taken to the temple of Ajax Celestia, with Makari currently writing the first book, writing in the traditional High Eternal style, a mixture of words and images together. She writes the story of the progenitor, she writes the story of their new god, the the first book of Ajax Celestia has been completed. The second book, it is going to be the book of Heresy. And that is when we get a little bit of a data page from Zurus, who is now the Prime Eternal after Eros stepped down. Eros is seen as a true Eternal, and he is going to be treated as such. His new position is Pope Minister for Change. The secret of resurrection has been let out. While some Eternals, they bring up a plan to to really, to make it hidden again, to make it a secret, all of these have been pushed off the table. The way Zurus sees it, there is no half-thought brainwashing schemes that we can do. The truth is, it is likely their civilization is going to collapse in a few thousand years. At that point, they will forget again. If Eternals have anything working for them, it is time. They will live forever, and humanity will die out. Something else will be reborn, and they will have no knowledge of the Eternal resurrection process. So Zorus's plan is to simply wait them out. With them currently in a state of alliance with Krakoa and Arako, any Eternal acting against them for any reason, it will immediately lead to exclusion. Not only that, they have reparations to make to all human governments. This includes access to energy sources and certain technology. Zorus sees this as kind of a win because it's technology and things that they simply will not understand. He goes on to say that Ajak and her self-admitted heresies and anyone who follows her places themselves outside of eternal society. If their actions interfere with the eternal principles, they will be captured and they will be excluded. And last but not least, the machine was reset. This reset was not changed by the Celestial. Presumably, this is because of the action of Fostos. Believing that this is for the best because it has cleaned out whatever recent bugs were inside the machine system. Now we understand this to be the machine really grabbing some kind of intelligence. It is becoming self-aware on a scale that we have never seen before. And when Fostos reset it, this put it back to its factory settings. But the important takeaway from all of this is that Fostos is the one that reset the machine. It was not the Celestial. So for those wondering if Magneto was brought back to life. His life was taken because of Uranus, not be because of the Celestial or anything else, which means Magneto's death it has not been reversed. At this point, that is only an assumption. But from everything that I have read so far, Magneto remains dead. He is going to remain dead because there is no, no effort whatsoever to bring him back or do his resurrection. These were his wishes. This is how they maintain some kind of hold on Arako with the Great Ring, everything else going on. This is when we hop over to New York. The young boy Toby had died with Icarus dying and being resurrected 
resurrected. Toby's life is the one that was sacrificed for the Eternals' rebirth. This is something that Icarus has been feeling so very heavily on, never understanding why he was drawn to Toby. But after Judgment Day, he fully understands. Moreover, Toby's mother has learned the truth that with the rebirth of Icarus, Toby's life had been sacrificed. That is when Icarus shows up at Toby's mother's front door, and in a fit of rage, she starts punching him, goes to the kitchen, grabs a knife, and she tries to stab him. Icarus, very sad, very beaten down, he lets her know that he didn't know. At least at the time, she does everything she can to hurt him. But the truth is, there is nothing that she is capable of doing that would even leave a scratch on him. But she doesn't need to because Icarus, he is beating himself up so very badly. There is nothing that she could ever do that he wouldn't do to himself. Neither of them feeling better about the situation. Neither of them knowing what to do. The only question, where do we go from here? What are we going to do now? A very heartwarming moment because you can see the guilt in Icarus's eyes. You can see the heartache coming from Toby's mother. The two of them so very badly wounded and and so many people left wondering, what do we do? That is what takes us over to London. We have Sally who is meeting up with one of the Hex. Before returning to the armory, the Hex wanted to meet up with Sally. The Hex planning to meet and speak with certain humans, the families of those that had their lives stolen from them. This is something that is not very pleasant, and so the Hex had come to Sally because this is a much more, a more delicate, a very lighter conversation conversation because the two of them had talked about poetry. Of course, Sally wants nothing to do with the Hex after learning the truth of the Eternals. Even the Hex recognizing what it has done, it is very wrong. It's not something that is forgivable, but she is hoping that this is the last time this world or any world has seen her or her sister Hexes. While they stay in storage, she has every intention of writing some more poetry. If she is ever released again, she wants to share these poems poems with Sally. If Sally is no longer around, then her children. If their children are no longer around, then her children's children. And Sally, pausing for a moment, she lets the Eternal know that it is okay, that you can talk to me or any of my descendants about your poetry. This is when we go to the Temple of Ajax Celestia. With our Eternals having a little meeting, we have Star Fox who is apologizing in person. He needs to work with Zerus. He aims to save all of their people. He also would like to attempt to free his parents. That it is up to Fastos and the rest of the Eternals. They need to do the work. They need to face their new judgment. At this point, Cersei is dead. The machine is unable to return her. Cersei is the first martyr for the cause. But the Eternals have come to talk to Ajax. With Gilgamesh not showing up, unable to let go of vengeance, they continue to go police the Eternals, not showing up because they do not trust any Celestial. Ajax believes that this is a good thing, because it is possible to have too much faith in an unproven god, that they all should watch her closely. But Cersei being the martyr for the cause, a deeply flawed individual, this is the point. Eternals were never made perfect, they were just made eternal. But if she could transcend her nature, all of them live in a hope of a similar miracle happening to them. Ajax knows that she must be a better god, that the Eternals must be better Eternals. And going down this path, they are going to discover exactly what that means. Right now, the humans hate them and it is rightfully so. The Eternals owe them their lives and they should have them. Their existence is now penance. Walk among the humans. Get to know them. It is not enough to follow the principles. She believes that the principles are not enough. And for the time, she cannot free them from the principles, at least not yet. One day, she hopes to be able to do so. But together, they can all work towards this singular goal. That is what brings us to the exclusion. Yorano sitting here beating the heck out of Druig, having as much fun as he can possibly have, torturing and beating someone to the brink of death. But Zerus has come to interrupt this beating to let Uranos know that there is a peace treaty. The Iraqi people will have access to your gifts for one hour. This will be a time and place of their choosing. Uranos, the only thing he hears is a 
that he will be let out again. Zorus reminds him that it will be in servitude and bound to those that hates. The truth is, Yoranos could care less. The only thing he cares about is the fact that he will be let out again. And until that day happens, he has Druig as a play toy. For Yoranos, this is as happy as an ending as it could possibly be for him. Taking us over to Krakoa. As the mutants sit here and try to rebuild, fix everything that has been broken by the Eternals, we have Fostos who is arriving, and he has come with a gift for Krakoa. This is a message left behind by the machine for the island of Krakoa, the mutant island itself. Before the machine had been reset, it wanted to get this message out to Krakoa before everything stopped, before it had no memory of what came before. With the message being relayed, Wolverine and Fostos walking off, Wolverine has to ask, what did the message say? This is when Fostos lets us know something that we really didn't know before, because the message that was relayed is a little complicated. Celestials arrived on Earth a million years ago. They transformed humans into Eternals and Deviants, using humans as the template. They also created the machine itself. They looked for inspiration. There was a huge sentient system that was running through the very planet they stand on. They found a living island on Earth. They used this as the template to create the machine. They used Krakoa as the template for the machine. And so when you ask, what did the message say? The machine was saying goodbye to its mother, to its father, to itself. Picking us back up with Toby's mother and Icarus. Sophia has brought in Icarus and he is going to be living with her. This is a way for both of them to try and heal. For Icarus to try and have his penance try to really just redeem himself in the eyes of her. This is her attempt at healing in some kind of manner. She is hoping that maybe seeing Icarus really try to redeem himself in the eyes of humanity. She believes that this might give something meaning. That her son's death wasn't in vain. That Icarus's good deeds moving forward may mean something. In turn, this would mean that Toby's life means something. Asking Icarus what he is going to do, he is going to do everything he can. From the smallest of things to the biggest of things. We see him in the pouring down rain, helping somebody change their tire. This is the new job of the Eternals. The heretics will walk among them. They will protect them. If they die, they kill them. They are eternal, and among the things that are eternal is shame. They are becoming Earth's new heroes. From the smallest of deeds to the greatest of deeds, they are there for humanity, living among them day in and day out. It may take an eternity to have their penance, but they will do it at all costs. And so the machine that is Earth continues. The heretics and the orthodox together and apart. The machine of Earth is now fully operating Operational, no malfunctions remaining. And that is the end of this story. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So for my thoughts when it comes to Judgment Day, this is probably the biggest event that I have covered on this channel thus far. With it being about 30, 33 comics long, it is one heck of an event. Tons and tons of tie-ins that really directly affected everything going on with Judgment Day. There were a couple of them that weren't really related to it, like X-Force and things of that nature, but we did see a small remnant of what it was going on inside of those comics. I personally am very happy that Magneto is staying dead. I know a lot of people want him to come back, and don't get me wrong, I love Magneto. I think he is an amazing character, and I would love to see him again in the future. But at least for the time being, he has to stay gone. His death is too instrumental to, to the Great Ring, to their pact with the Iraqi people, everything. He promised the Great Ring that he was going to give up his immortality. He promised that if he died, he would stay that way. And so for these relations to continue on, Magneto has to stay away. He has to stay gone. It is going to be interesting to see how the Eternals really operate moving forward. Because at the end of the day, Zorus doesn't really seem to care about everything that happened. Yes, he understands that he has to make some things right here and there. But for the most part, the Eternals, they are not paying any heavy cost. There is no attempt to stop their resurrection 
resurrection, nothing, even Uranos, is really getting what he wants. He has been stuck in prison for so very long, he doesn't care why he gets out. He just knows that he is going to get out, even if it is for an hour. He may take this opportunity to try to escape. He may do this with the help of Druid. There are a ton of possibilities, but one thing is for certain. This is not the last we have seen of Uranus. The biggest takeaway is how all mutant kinds, humanity, eternals, they have had to take a very hard look at themselves to understand what they are, where they are going, and where they have been. Judgment Day has not only questioned their goals, their principles, but also their very character. And after all of the needless death, even though much of it had been reversed, the pain still reverberates throughout society, with each individual feeling the weight themselves. None are feeling it more than Icarus, because Icarus has been struggling with this for the longest of times, and he is simply trying to find his way along this new path. I was really hoping that this series was going to take away resurrection for mutant kind, to put some real stakes, put some real risk into everything going on. Unfortunately, that did not happen. In fact, we are seeing resurrection digging in, with humanity being brought into the loop. Children with cancer, children about to die, things of that nature. These people are being front-loaded, and they are going to be the first of humanity to be resurrected without any disease, without any cancer, so on and so forth. It's roughly about 5% of the five's work, but there are still many threats that are looming off in the distance. More specifically, Orcus and Sinister, with Sinister having the ability to reset the timeline anytime he chooses, with Orcus still working with great effort to take down mutant kind. This may have been one of the biggest events and one of the biggest threats that mutant kind has yet to face, but there is still so much more left on the horizon. Cable has already let us know, many from the future have already let us know, that this era of mutant kind was the epitome of mutant kind. It was their peak. It was when they were at their best. The age of Krakoa was them sitting at the mountaintop, and from here on out, it looks like it is going to be all downhill. That mutant's best days, they have come, but they are not going to last forever. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with Judgment Day, I just recently did a complete full video. It is five freaking hours long, and it will get you caught up on every single issue, every single tie-in in reading order. So be sure to check that out. The link is down in the description as well as the top of this video. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership, much like Patreon, having five different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.